ChatGPT is all the rage right now. Wouldn't it be great if you could build a similar application for your own organization to have a one-stop shop to find information throughout your company? How would you even start building something like this? Well, it starts with the platform. I'm Laura Giordana, technical marketing engineer here at Nutanix, and I wanna show you today how the Nutanix Cloud Platform is AI ready and provides a consistent experience for you to build out your AI applications and workflows. Let's take a look. So we have a chatbot app running here on a remote edge Nutanix cluster with NVIDIA A100 GPU cards. The app is containerized using Nutanix Kubernetes engine at the back end. So if we take a look at Prism, we can see that this is our far edge cluster. And we can see in the VMs view, we have some Kubernetes nodes here, a GPU uh, node pool, a worker with a GPU pass-through. And uh, this is where we're running our app as well as uh, some Kubeflow pipelines. And this is where the model is actually being served from that that chatbot is using. So if we jump into Kubeflow, we can take a look at our endpoint and we can see that our chatbot endpoint is running and ready to receive requests. So you can use this chatbot you know, internally, for example, for internal support to get answers quickly. So for example, I can ask it some basic Nutanix questions like how do I reset the CBM password? And so the answer it's giving me is not accurate. Uh, it's telling me I need to contact support. Uh, so let's try another question. So I'll ask, uh, why is the Nutanix CVM reporting a default password error? And the answer it gives is semi-accurate, but it's calling the CVM a converged virtualization manager as opposed to a controller virtual machine. So let's jump back into Kubeflow and take a look at um, where this model is coming from. So if we look at our pipeline runs here, we can see the inference pipeline and we can see that it's fetching the model from the object store, creating the inference service, and then serving that model out to our endpoint, which is what this chat app is using. So how can we actually fine tune this model? So I'm gonna go ahead back to the front end app and I'm gonna go ahead and upload a new KB uh, using these, um, this file upload feature. So where did that file actually go? So if I jump back into Prism Central where this app is running and where Kubeflow is running, we can see that we have an object store running here on our local inference cluster called Inference Edge. And if I drill down into that and launch the objects browser, we can see that that, uh, that object got placed in a bucket called data bucket source. And we can verify the timestamp here so we can see that it shows that Nutanix.json file was uploaded at 6.25 p.m and that's also the uh, current time. So we know that that's the latest and greatest. So coming back into the object store, we can take a look at the replication rules for this bucket. So we can see that this bucket is replicating over to a destination bucket on the edge demo object store called data bucket. So if we jump into that edge demo object store, that's running on our near edge training cluster. And so drilling into our object store here, we can see that data bucket and we can just verify the replication as we know it's coming from data bucket source into data bucket. So we have Kubeflow running here on our training cluster as well. And if we do a refresh of the runs here, we can see that it's already running the fine tuned pipeline. So it's detected that new data in the object store. It's fetched that data and now it's fine tuning the model based on that data that we uploaded. And so this will take a couple of minutes. So I'll go ahead and speed up the video here. But once it's actually finished, it's going to push the updated model to the object store and then it'll be ready for the inference cluster to pick it up. So once it's done, we can jump back into Kubeflow on our inference cluster, and we can see that it's now running the inference pipeline again. So it's fetched the updated model from the object store. It's creating the inference service, and then it'll serve that new model with KServe. And so then we'll be able to use the chat app and it will be using the new model. So now let's go in and we'll ask it the same questions we asked it previously and see what those answers look like. So we can see that we get a new answer now and it's much more helpful than the previous answer. And let's check out the second question as well. Okay, so this is definitely more accurate based on our new KB data. So all we had to do was upload that new KB to local object storage, 
And then using Nutanix Objects Replication and Kubeflow, the training cluster was able to automatically fine tune the model based on that KB and the inference cluster was able to start using the new model as soon as it was done. So this was just one example of an AI application that you could run on the Nutanix Cloud Platform. We had our chatbot app running at the far edge, and then we had the training being done on another cluster, and that could have also been being done in the cloud. And then we had objects replication and Kubeflow, keeping everything in sync and automated. Now there are many other use cases for AI which could run on the Nutanix Cloud Platform. What AI applications is your organization interested in running? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to check out the Nutanix validated design for Edge and AI available on our solutions portal. See you in the next video.